Hey friends. I was just teaching a guitar lesson and uh, I heard this loud bang. Uh, and I realized I have broken another string. So I've had a pretty unlucky two weeks here. And I was about to cut it off uh, and then I realized, oh wait, I can save this string. And I was about to do it, but then I realized, you know what, I'm gonna wait and film this because I think this is a really great tip to know for all the guitarists out there that will really get you out of a pickle if you maybe don't have an extra string on hand before a recording session, or maybe you're about to walk out on stage. So this is how to salvage a broken string. Now, a few weeks ago, I broke a string as well, and I made a video uh, with a couple tips on how to stop breaking strings. Um, that string broke in a very different way. It was my B string, and that was made of gut, a bit more prone to breaking. And that broke at the nut, and I realized it was because maybe the nut slot was a bit too thin. It couldn't really fit the string, and the string was grinding against the nut slot, and eventually it snapped. This is a very different break, and it could be a, a very different tip as a result. Here I'm using nylon strings on the Cedar Top Guitar by Sayers Guitars. And the nylon string um, bass strings on classical guitars are basically a silk core, a bunch of silk threads wrapped with some type of metal. And this break happened right at the, the bridge. Basically the winding is still attached, but the most of the string popped, popped up and I can actually see the, I can feel the inside of the silk now. But it looks pretty bad. The strings flopping all over the place. And if I was less experienced at this point, I would say, oh, I just have to cut off the string and find a new one and undo this one. And it would take a long time. And what if I didn't have an extra string and I had to go on stage? I would be seriously in a pickle. So two things you always need in your guitar case. You need a nail clippers or something to cut strings. Uh, and you need a peg winder. This is optional, the peg winder, but it really speeds up the process, especially if you're about to walk on stage or maybe you're in the middle of a concert. And by the way, what I'm gonna show you here applies to all instruments that use uh, wound strings around some type of core material. So this works for all types of guitars, electric basses, um, ouds, lutes that use metal wound strings. So to salvage this broken string, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find where it sort of, sort of unwound and we're going to cut as close as we can to salvage as much of the string as possible. Uh, I don't want to, you know, cut in the middle. We're going to try to save this thing. <laughs> so I'm going to cut it just enough so that I have a clean uh, wound string. There's no like frailing off of the end. And now I'm left with this, you know, string tied to the bridge, of course, which we can just get rid of. We can just rip this off. There. <laughs> and again, you can you can see where the silk came loose there. Okay, so now we grab this long string that's tied to the headstock. Uh, and we're basically gonna, gonna pull this down and we're gonna retie it, and then that's it. So this is like a two minute fix if you do it right. However, for this to work, you have to make sure that when you tie your strings on, you don't cut off all the excess string. On all my instruments, uh, I tie the strings at the bridge, I clip off the excess, but then I wind as much of the string as possible uh, inside the scroll, inside the headstock. That way, when the string does break at the bridge, I can pull it down and I have a lot of excess string. If you clip all of the excess off, you can't do this trick. Okay, so all I need to do now is gradually loosen the string here, and I'll get more and more length out of it. And once I have enough, I can tie it at the bridge. I still have quite a lot of string, so this is, this is good news. <laughs> now while I'm doing that, I just wanted to mention, if you're enjoying this guitar tip and you wanna see more tips like this, you can head over to my Patreon page where I have lots of exclusive tips and behind the scenes content uh, where you can sign up and get instant access to all of that. Uh, there's also MP3 downloads of my videos, CDs, and you can even get a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me on Skype. So check that out. For now, back to the video. Now this is taking a little bit long, so this is where I can grab my, my peg winder. Let's say the audience is waiting. <laughs> Hold on, guys. And then just keep bringing this all the way down. And if I can get it so that the knot is still there, so I still have tension, that's even faster. If I have to, I can just put it back through the slot and, 
and retie. Okay, so we keep loosening until we have some string that goes quite a bit past the bridge, right? So if we can get like two inches past the bridge, we should have enough to tie it around. Um, sometimes you just don't make it and you were so close and that's, that's a tragedy, but <laughs> so I have enough string. Now I'm going to simply put it through the slot, straight through with the excess string kind of taut uh, to get as much length as possible on the bridge side. Now we wrap it underneath itself like so. And now we put it back underneath itself. And depending on the string, you might want to go back again underneath itself one more time. There. Okay, and now we pay, pull a bit to have, have a bit of a knot to stop the string. And actually here's where some people make a mistake. Um, they leave the excess string, the exit point, on top of the bridge. Uh, this is not good. This is not very secure. What you want is for the last part of the string that leaves the knot to be on the underside of the bridge. So pull that string around and see if you can get it on the back side of the bridge. And that'll be a much stronger hold. And now we can actually just give the string a couple yanks to get it taut. That string's not going anywhere. Which means now we can grab our peg winder, start winding. Attach the string. I first usually tune it up until it sounds like the E. So now I'm at a checkpoint. I still have a ways to go. And I usually use my, you know, my ear training. Uh, here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Is a perfect fourth, which means this should now be an A. And I did it. So, I know that was a long explanation, but to actually do that takes maybe a minute or two on stage. So next time you're about to cut off a string and throw it away, double check that you can salvage it first and get back to playing. See you next time.